Welcome to the Software Carpentry Lecture on Databases. In this screencast, we'll show you how to combine data from multiple tables. The database we use in this screencast has two tables, the experiment table you are already familiar with from previous lectures, and the person table you see here. This table describes each scientist. It contains their first name, last name, and their login ID. Suppose you wanted to get the experiment data and the scientist's first name and last name on each row not just their login names. We do this by using the join command. This says join records in the person table together with records in the experiment table and return all of the columns. The results may not be quite what you expected. When doing a join, by default, the database returns a row for every possible combination of rows from the join tables. This is called the cross product of rows. So what we see here is one row from the person table for every row from the experiment table. The database does not attempt to figure out how to join the tables by the column names or by the data it contains. It leaves that part for you to explain. So what we want to do is only return the combinations of rows from the person table and the experiment table when the login ID fields are the same. To express this in SQL, we need to use an on clause that specifies this fact. The on clause tells the database which rows to return from the default cross product of rows we saw before. In this case, it only returns rows from the cross product where the login ID is the same from both the person table and the experiment table. And you can see that here. The on clause is like a where clause that is applied when joining tables. In fact, we could have written the query like this. But using the on clause makes it clear what relationship you intend there to be in the join of these two tables. Notice in our query that we put the person table before the login ID in the on clause. This is necessary because the login field appears in both the person table and the experiment table. So we need to be clear which tables fields we are referring to. We can use the same dot syntax to refer to columns that we want to return. So for example, if we wrote this, this query returns only the first name column from the person table and returns every other column, that's the star, from the experiment table. To simplify the query, we can provide an alias for the tables we are joining. We do this by putting the alias name right after the table name in the from clause. So we say from person p join experiment e. This means that in this query, the person table must be referred to as p and the experiment table as e. So we need to fix up the query with the new names. This is exactly the same query as before, except it's a lot shorter, which comes in handy when we write more complex queries. You can join more than two tables simply by adding another join clause to the query. Before we go on, let's add another table to our database. This table is called Experiment Details. For each project, an experiment ID, this table lists the name of the experiment and the location. So say for each experiment you wanted the full name of the scientist who ran the experiment and the date name and location of the experiment itself. We'll put these fields down now and come back later to add in the table aliases once we've written our query. These fields are coming from three tables, the person table, the experiment table, and the experiment detail table. So we'll need to join all of these tables together in our query. The person table is joined to the experiment table as before by the login ID. We then join to the experiment detail table by specifying the condition that both the project and the experiment ID must be the same between rows of the experiment table and the experiment detail table. Now we can go back and update our selected field names with their table aliases. Since our condition for joining in the experiment detail table is that the project and experiment columns must be equal to those in the experiment table, only those experiments that appear both in the experiment table and the experiment detail table will appear in this final result. 
So if there were some experiments which weren't described in the experiment detail table, those experiments don't show up in these results. So for instance, we don't see Ivan's experiments on time travel. In a future lecture, we'll talk about a different type of join which allows you to merge records between tables even when some of the join conditions aren't met precisely. In this screencast, we've shown you how to mix data from different tables using the join clause. We've seen that we can join two or more tables using the join clause and that the on clause acts like a filter that specifies the conditions for how to join rows from each table.